Hello there. It's time for everybody's favorite mating pattern. The smothered mate. Now if you want to be fancy, you can call it Philidor's legacy. There are some people that dispute that name because there are earlier sources of the mate, but it's called Philidor's legacy in, in, in some sources. But today it's best known as smothered mate. Now why is it called smothered, uh, smothered mate? The main reason for that is the mate is delivered by a knight. And this is sort of the basic skeleton. A queen, this will most often happen in a corner. A queen will, will give a check here on the long diagonal. The king will move to the corner, will give a check here. The king will go again. We have a double attack by the knight and the queen. The king goes to the corner and then the queen goes to the protected square. So it has to be captured by the rook and then the smothered mate. So the king is boxed in by its own pieces. So the king is kind of smothered, like, get out of the way, man, what's up? So that's why it's called a smothered mate. So this is the basic setup. The most common type of smothered mate is in the corner and happens with a queen, most often a queen landing a, a check here and then the knight swooping in. In this case, black can't capture the knight but very often when you see this pattern, uh, especially between strong players, they will know about the mate and they will capture the knight. In this case, you will get back rank mated. However, if we add another rook and we give this check and we go here, now black should take the knight. If he plays king g8, he gets mated as we already saw. Double check, so the king has to move. He can't interpose anything. This is a protected square, and now checkmate. So a strong player will know that if he gets into this, he has to capture the knight with the rook. And with another rook, there is no back rank mate. So this would only, in most cases, win the exchange for the uh, for the party that uh, is giving the check on f7. Now, before going on to uh, some further examples, I think it's uh, a good idea to look at you know, some fails, uh, some ways that, you know, people might uh, fail at executing this pattern. And one of those would be this game that I found on the internet. White went, queen takes d5. Black went to the corner and white played knight f7 and probably got very excited. And went for the pattern instead. He should have just played knight d6. When you pick up the rook, you win the exchange. But here... Rook takes, but there is a queen down here, guys, and the queen is covering the square. So be aware of the square being covered by uh, a long distance piece, like a queen or a rook over here, because then it simply will not work. Another common fail is a situation like this, where we give the check, we give this check, and we give the double check, and we Start, you know, we get ready to write the post on Reddit. I got my, I got my first smooth mate. Only to find out that if knight takes, the rook doesn't have to take, and the rook is left here, and we no longer have this mate. So don't, don't fall into that. So those are some ways that you can, you can fail at this. But if you are aware of that, you will be uh, much more successful. Now the first kind of known case of this mate happened in a game where Giovanni Greco uh, had the black pieces, Italian player in I think the 16th century so we had sort of a typical opening for that time c takes d4 and now a tactical shot by black, he took with knight on d4 jumped in with the queen and now we have devastating threats here, white decided to ditch the uh, f2 pawn and now we don't have this mechanism where we, uh, if the queen was back here, we would have this mechanism where we give a check, another check, and queen to g1, and then mate on f2. But here's another uh, twist to this pattern. If you have the bishop behind the queen, the queen is actually protected on g1. So you can actually play the move queen g1, because the queen is protected, like I said, the king can't capture. So you have to capture with the knight or the rook. In this case, there's a knight, but the rook isn't on f1, 
So whichever way you capture it, it's going to be knight f2, checkmate on the next move. And that's what happened in the Greco game. Now let's uh, look at a few examples from the openings. There are many openings where you can get this modern mate. And then the king is usually boxed in on its starting square. The most famous of these is probably the uh, Blackburn Shilling Gambit. We'll uh, look at it from the black side. e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop c4. And the objectively bad move, knight d4, but it contains a trap. If white takes the pawn, there's queen g5 attacking the knight, capturing the pawn on g2. White has to react to this and place rook f1. Black takes the pawn on e4. And now white has to give up the queen, because if it goes bishop e2, which many people will do, have done and will do in the future, there's knight f3. And this is a small mate. King is surrounded by its own pieces. And it certainly isn't going anywhere. So checkmate. Now there are some other famous uh, traps. So let's, let's turn it around again. And let's have some traps for white. There are there are typical traps in the Karakan, e4, c6. And you can have it both in d4 or the so-called two knights. So we can go d4. And there are games here, knight d7, the Karpov variation, queen e2. And many people have caught a lot of victims in, uh, in bullet games where they go knight f6 here, expecting white to have gone knight f3 or, or bishop out or something. And then they get hit with the smothered mate, the queen pins the pawn, and the king stuck behind its own pawns, gets smothered mate. Now this also works, like I said, in case of the two knights, knight c3, and there's essentially no difference here. It's exactly the same mate, except the knight is here uh, instead of the pawn being here. And this happened in the game Paul Keres against Edward Arlamowski back in 1950. There's a famous trap in the Budapest Gambit. If we turn the board around, there's d4, knight of six, c4, e5, the Budapest Gambit, knight g4. And this, this trap has many, many victims. Bishop to b4, check. So far, I mean, this is normal. Black plays queen e7 to regain the pawn. White wants to break the pin, plays a3. And there's knight g takes e5. Now, white can, of course, just take the knight, and the game goes on. But many people have fallen for the, oh no, free piece. But of course, it's not a free piece, because, well, you know it by now. Queen is pinning the pawn, so we can play knight d3. Smothered mate. This can also happen in another d4 opening, at the d4, at d5, the so-called uh, Albin counter gambit. e5 takes d4. And actually, the way the pieces are, are set up is similar to the uh, Budapest trap. The queen comes to e7. And if white isn't careful, we capture this pawn eventually on e5, hoping that white takes this pawn. And people have fallen, have, have indeed fallen for this, taken here with a knight, only to get smothered made it on d3. This happened in the game Kasar against Kuznetsov in 1969. So as you can see, Smothered mate can arise in the opening, but most often it's arising uh, in the corner version that we looked at at the beginning. Here is a, a grandmaster example, Yaakov Mure, grandmaster from Israel, playing against Erling Mortensen, a Danish grandmaster, who did not have a good day at the office after bishop c5. He could have gotten perhaps an equal game with bishop takes e5. The idea being if, if pawn takes, there's rook c8. But he had different ideas, and he played knight d7. Very unsensibly. Is that a word? In any case, it was not sensible, because he blocked the queen from protecting f7. And that means we can play. You're absolutely right, queen g8. Bishop behind the queen, we mentioned that earlier means that the king can take, that, that's the important point, and now knight lands on f7. No queen takes, so this is mate. 
the Dutch GM Jan Timmen managed to get a pretty clean version of, of this mate against Nigel Short. In this position he played E7, and Short could have resigned, but I guess he saw the humor in, in the inevitable here, and he allowed it, he played Rook E8. And of course, all we have to do is land a check on this diagonal, which is pretty easy. The queen comes to c4, that the diagonal. And now the knight can come in, king g8, knight h6, we've seen this mechanism before. King h8, and then the queen, of course, protect it, which is the key point, and then knight f7. Smothered mate. Now, one of... <laughs> One of uh, like the leading experts in, in getting smothered mate must have been uh, Paul Morphy. He had a lot of games with, with smothered mates. And this was one of them. His opponent, his last move was really bad. He played king c8 instead of king e8 when the game would have gone on. Morphy would have had to uh, regain his rook and, you know, things could have happened. But here, it, it's pretty clear. Knight c5. And it's basically what happens in the corner, but we've mirrored it and shifted it. Now if the king goes here, there's queen f7. Just like when you're in the corner and go here, sorry, we go here from king, king g8 to f8, the queen lands on f7. If you can imagine it, you know, mirror it and, and shift it. King has to go to the corner, knight comes into d7. This is just like knight f7 check in our main pattern, king comes back. This is the double attack double check that we see in the main pattern and this is just like the king to the corner and then we get this sort of like a smothered appellate mate we haven't covered appellate mate but uh, we will and you'll, you'll see what I mean and knight b7 finishing it off now this also happens often in, uh, this particular mechanism happens also in the middle of the board and for that we can an example from the great Rashid Nesmetinov. Well, his body of work is, is quite impressive, and this one he uh, got his version of the smothered mate. He played queen h4, check the diagonal is open, king must go to d1. The knight swoops in, we have a double attack. Of course, the bishop is here, but either way, if the king went to this square, we have the mate. King d1, and now we box in the king, we suffocate it. And we have the smothered mate, knight f2. Now, before giving you some puzzles, I do have uh, two more examples, pretty nice ones. Uh, a little bit more complicated. And very often, the threat of smothered mate or using the smothered mate is like the key component in a combination. So this one, it's white to move. White is down a piece. If he plays something passive, moves the queen, you know, takes the pawn or something, black should be in time to connect his queen and rook, play this, and then bring the rook over, and he's going to enjoy his extra piece. His pieces will come to, into the game. So white needs to find something pretty fast, and he does. His knowledge of the smothered mate enables him to find the move knight b5. And this is just deadly. We're threatening knight c7, and there's simply not much black can do if you try to kick the knight. The knight is actually in a key position here to cover some squares. We could say this is sort of an Anastasia mate if you if you shift it. So the critical move is to take the queen, but then rook d8 lands, the queen has to go back, and we have smothered mate using a pin here. The knight lands and we have the typical black pieces around the king and they can't escape smothered mate. Now this one, pretty nice as well. We are, uh, yeah, the smothered mate isn't forced but it, it's the key, it's the key to the combination. So we have equal material but white has a very strong move. Sort of we have bait, attraction, decoy. He plays rook e8. And the idea is if, if king takes, I win your queen. 
which is what black actually should do because otherwise he gets mated. And now with the king on e8, we can take the g7 pawn with check and we win the queen. We actually take it with our queen. So after rook e8, after rook takes e8, we will land very similar to the Morphe example. We have knight e7. Now if rook takes, there's back rank. So most likely we would see the smothered mate and again this sort of smothered epaulette mate. Always nice. So uh, I hope that you've mastered this pattern. And well, it's basically everybody's favorite pattern. Everybody, wh when you get your first smothered mate, it, it's such a good moment. And you want to tell everybody like, I got, yeah, I got smothered mate. And this feeling, you know, it doesn't go away. You still get excited. I mean, I've played, I've played over 100,000 games in my life. And when you get the small admit, it's, it's always nice. I'm not going to lie. So, okay. Now we have two puzzles for you to uh, deal with here. And this is the first one. It's black to move. He's down a rook. He is being threatened with back rank issues here. So we have to find something quite fast. And something very forcing. And you should be able to do that. So I will give you two puzzles. One for black and one for white. And tell me the solution in the comments. Show me that you've mastered the smothered mid. So this one is for black. How does black win here using a series of forced moves? Should be able to do this one. The last one is a puzzle for white. Slightly more complicated, but not, not too much. A little bit of a twist on our theme. And there are some side variations you have to figure out. But basically it's white to move and mate in four moves. You should be able to figure it out. I'll leave it up to you. Tell me in the comments the puzzle for black and the puzzle for white. And once again, if you appreciate the uh, mating pattern videos, I would really appreciate if in turn you would give me a like. And well, even share the video or, or subscribe if you haven't. So that wraps up the small mate. I hope to see you soon in another uh, pattern recognition video. Could be a checkmate pattern. It could be a tactical pattern. You know, look out for my playlists. Uh, I'm doing a lot of patterns these days, and it's going to be the best playlist on YouTube. The best. We have the best patterns. You know, just wait for it. See you.